Well, the thing that's unique to Horizon 4 is dynamic seasons. It's, you know, it hasn't been done before in an open world game. I can't wait to see people react to that. A world which genuinely and completely changes on a weekly basis. We've gone and asked the question about seasons, you know, multiple times before. We asked it in Horizon 2, we asked it in Horizon 3. It is kind of the holy grail of open world games. And we've been going after it for a while. The fact that at the same time we were considering Britain, it just felt like this perfect storm, right? We have to go after these twin goals. The specifics about the, the sun arc and how the lighting changes from season to season. We threw a winter sky that we'd originally gone out and captured during that first part of the process and threw it on the Amalfi Coast from Horizon 2 to see how that system would, would pan out. And instantly it gave everything this kind of wintry vibe, despite the fact it was the Italian coast. And so we, we knew going into this that having that particular specific data set for, for each um, season was really, really important and was, would be key in making sure the mood was fully captured. I can't see us being able to pull off dynamic seasons in anywhere other than Britain. It's a kind of place that we live so it's so close to our hearts and we're desperate to do it proud so there's this inherent challenge that we put upon ourselves more than normal. Like we really have to do this justice. So the extra work from Seasons came along as part of the We Can Rise to do this. We've always looked to the locals of whatever place it is we've tried to recreate in the past to tell us when we've captured the spirit of a place. And with the UK, we were kind of the, the arbiters of that. You know, We had to make sure that we were capturing the true spirit of the UK and we were acutely aware of when we weren't quite doing it. That kind of intimate knowledge with the location, I think is integral into how we've been able to achieve our dynamic seasons feature. You have to be living in that space throughout a whole year to truly understand how everything changes. The team have been able to get out, get in their cars, take their cameras, take the recording equipment, whatever their discipline is, and go and experience Britain in each of these seasons and bring back the data which allows this to be, I think, the most authentic uh, recreation of a world we've ever achieved. So every time we would go out, we'd find great locations that we could record in, and we'd always uh, kind of go, all right, great, well, let's come back here when it's spring or when it's winter. One of the things that, we, that we've changed per season is the birds and the wildlife that change per, per ambient zone. The Yorkshire Moors was a great example of that, where uh, we, we went there in autumn, and we, it was full of grouse. It was kind of, that was the season for it. And then you go back in spring, and it, like the wildlife is completely changed. It's a lot more kind of, pleasant in a sense, it doesn't feel as foreboding. So in springtime this is this is kind of, imagine you're surrounded by heather, uh, lots of uh, small birds, uh, you can hear prop planes around you. It feels really fresh and uh, kind of active, full of life, whereas opposed to something like autumn, where the grouse have started to come into season, it feels a little bit cooler, a little bit colder, and it really feels different based on season. Seasons touch almost every single asset or asset type within our game with each seasonal change. We're delivering effectively four worlds the size of Forza Horizon 3. It's not an oversimplification, it's, it's literally true. I mean, it has been four times the amount of capture, four times the amount of data, four times the amount of content as well that we've had to review to make sure that we're pulling out absolutely the best moments that we possibly could. That's all part of the, you know, the tapestry, I think. You know, that we don't just go and recreate a landscape, we rec recreate you know, the country that we're in, the way it looks, hopefully the way it feels. That also affects the car massively, so you get all the kind of surface effects that you've associated with the Horizon game in the past, but that's now also seasonal. So uh, in winter, there's a, there's a very characteristic thing that happens in the UK with, uh, with the roads when they get gritted, and you get this particular type of grime that builds up around the body of the car. And we wanted to make sure things like that were captured. Uh, but also, you know, if you shift onto a slightly different surface, where there's virgin snow, you'll start to get all that build up around the sides of the car as well. And then in spring, you'll get it caked in mud when you're driving through some slippy, deformable mud. And that'll get washed off when you drive through puddling and then sort of build up slightly, slightly more afterwards again. It's not just about visuals, it has to affect the gameplay. Uh, it has to affect the driving experience, which is so central to our game. When you drive in a season, you have to feel that that season is different. It has to present different challenges, make you think about driving uh, in a slightly different way. And then from season to season, we need to be delivering new content which you know celebrates or respects that seasonal change but also just changes up the world and the experience. Welcome 
to autumn. So from a gameplay point of view, dynamic seasons change the way you drive, they change the way the world looks, they change every race, they change every road, they change every piece of gameplay that we do. So really, seasons do change everything in the world. Currently we're looking at one week per season, so you will play in in spring for a week. Uh, and then at the same point for everyone, obviously, your know, time zones will make it more or less likely whether you see this moment every week. But certainly at that point every week, the season will change and will progress to summer and to autumn. The vast majority of it you can play in every season. It just, the experience changes, it looks different, it drives different, the road surface is different. But then as the seasons come, we introduce brand new gameplay with that season and then that's kind of taken away as we bring another season. So it's a combination of most of the gameplay is playable in every single season, but there are new seasonal things we bring in each week. Throughout seasons you can have a totally different racetrack as well. So there's new experiences where you, you, you may have just learned the track in summer, but now you have to relearn it in, in, in winter, for example. But it's, it's that same experience of learning the track, you just get it so many more times now. So a really good example would be there's a cross-country race and you drive through a river for a huge part of it. And in summer, the river's really dry and low and it doesn't have as much of an effect on your handling. And then in, say, spring, that river's really full and it moves quicker, so you need something with high suspension or it's gonna slow you down a lot more. And then in winter, the entire thing's frozen and you're driving on top of this frozen river with a lot less grip, you'll understeer a lot more and you'll go wide. That sense of anticipation of what's to come, that sense of you know, collective memory. I was here last winter, where, where do you see what happens with the lake that freezes over? Or, or where do you see what this, this river does in, in summer when it dries up and, and changes the gameplay experience? There'll be that sense of, uh, of collective experience, collective anticipation, which I think will make this a really special experience for everyone who plays the game. I'm most excited to the way people respond to seasons, to hear that it it kind of falls into how they schedule their gaming anyway. This week I'm going to be playing and it's spring and I need to do the spring championships and then next week it's winter, I'm going to be doing some seasonal off-road cross-country events. I'm hoping that that just falls into their kind of daily schedule anyway. What I think we've achieved, which is, is Britain at its best. The best representation of Britain in each of the distinct seasons in the game. I'm also excited and hoping to hear players turn around and say, why has no one done this before? Why has no one done a AAA game with Dynamic Seasons? This should have been a thing ages ago, it's perfect. For the first time in the series, Forza Horizon 4 is a shared world game. Now, it's a big change and a potentially concerning one for some, so let's break down what this all means. First and foremost, it changes the other races you'll see while cruising around the open world. In Forza Horizon 2 and 3, the cars you saw hooning around the environment were what the Forza series dubs Drivatars, AI-powered driver profiles drawn from your friends list and beyond. In Forza Horizon 4, we'll still race against Drivatars when we start an event, but the cars you'll encounter in free roam will now be real people within a 72 player server. The reason developer Playground Games is doing this is because the team believes that real players will exhibit more interesting, more unpredictable and more fun behaviour than they could ever program into driver tars. I should stress at this point that this isn't compulsory. Forza Horizon 4 isn't an always online game and you don't have to play in the shared world if you don't want to. You can opt out with a push of a button and seamlessly transition into an offline experience that will replace the real people with driver tars again. According to Playground, this will ultimately be similar to the solo, open world free roaming experience of Forza Horizon 3. But if you are up for it, this is how it works. As you may recall, in Forza Horizon 3 we had Campaign Co-op, which supported 4 players, and Online Free Roam, which supported 12. The problem is, as Playground points out, 12 players isn't enough to make an entire Forza Horizon environment a shared world experience. Allow me to demonstrate why. Take Forza Horizon 3's map for instance, and imagine this can of beer is Service Paradise. This can of beer is the Great Ocean Road. So. We're hooning around Surface Paradise with all the other people on the server and we decide to journey down to the Great Ocean Road. There'd be nobody there when we get there and we'd have encountered nobody on the way. Forza Horizon 4 will group players together in groups of 12 based roughly on the area of the world they can see. 
As a player moves through the world and they approach another player, they'll be grouped into the same universe. Obviously, this all happens below the surface, there's no loading. So, now as you travel through the 72 player world, you'll be moving seamlessly from universe to universe, seeing other players come and go as you drive. Playground's plan is to make Forza Horizon 4 as social as possible. There's now a quick chat system available via the D-pad for players without a mic or who don't speak the same language. We'll also be able to form instant convoys with players met and take part in every race and every activity in up to six player co-op. It also probably goes without saying that as a shared world experience, whatever happens in the world happens for everyone. Weather, time of day, it's all synchronized. If it rains, everyone is out in it. When the sun sets, everyone sees it together. When the season changes, it changes for everyone. It's all done to reinforce the idea that we're all living and playing in the same space. Okay, neat, but what about the other issues inherent with shared world games? Pausing, griefing, losing connection, all that stuff. Well, Playground seems quietly confident that it's nipped those in the bud. Yes, you can still pause the game while online and resume at whatever velocity you were moving in before pausing. You can still use photo mode and drone mode too, and even the rewind function. No, you can't be griefed by strangers. All players who aren't your friends or in an official convoy with you are automatically ghosted on contact. And no, if you lose your internet connection mid-session, you won't lose any progress or be bumped out to the main menu. Forza Horizon 4 will just transition seamlessly towards offline state and you'll be free to carry on. So, hopefully this has got you up to speed on the functionality and philosophy behind Forza Horizon 4's shared world. For plenty more on Forza Horizon 4, stick with IGN first for the remainder of the month. For the first time in the series, Forza Horizon 4 is a shared world game. Now, it's a big change and a potentially concerning one for some, so let's break down what this all means. First and foremost, it changes the other races you'll see while cruising around the open world. In Forza Horizon 2 and 3, the cars you saw hooning around the environment were what the Forza series dubs driver tars. AI-powered driver profiles drawn from your friends list and beyond. In Forza Horizon 4, we'll still race against driver tires when we start an event, but the cars you'll encounter in free roam will now be real people within a 72 player server. The reason developer Playground Games is doing this is because the team believes that real players will exhibit more interesting, more unpredictable and more fun behaviour than they could ever program into driver tires. I should stress at this point that this isn't compulsory. Forza Horizon 4 isn't an always online game and you don't have to play in the shared world if you don't want to. You can opt out with a push of a button and seamlessly transition into an offline experience that will replace the real people with driver tires again. According to Playground, this will ultimately be similar to the solo, open world free roaming experience of Forza Horizon 3. But if you are up for it, this is how it works. As you may recall, in Forza Horizon 3 we had campaign co-op, which supported 4 players, and online free roam, which supported 12. The problem is, as Playground points out, 12 players isn't enough to make an entire Forza Horizon environment a shared world experience. Allow me to demonstrate why. Take Forza Horizon 3's map for instance, and imagine this can of beer is Service Paradise. This can of beer is the Great Ocean Road. So, we're hooning around Service Paradise with all the other people on the server, and we decide to journey down to the Great Ocean Road. There'd be nobody there when we get there, and we'd have encountered nobody on the way. Forza Horizon 4 will group players together in groups of 12, based roughly on the area of the world they can see. As a player moves through the world and they approach another player, they'll be grouped into the same universe. Obviously, this all happens below the surface, there's no loading. So, now as you travel through the 72 player world, you'll be moving seamlessly from universe to universe, seeing other players come and go as you drive. Playground's plan is to make Forza Horizon 4 as social as possible. There's now a quick chat system available via the D-pad for players without a mic or who don't speak the same language. We'll also be able to form instant convoys with players met and take part in every race and every activity in up to six player co-op. It also probably goes without saying that as a shared world experience, whatever happens in the world happens for everyone. Weather, time of day, it's all synchronized. If it rains, everyone is out in it. When the sun sets, everyone sees it together. When the season changes, it changes for everyone. It's all done to reinforce the idea that we're all living and playing in the same space. 
Okay, neat. But what about the other issues inherent with shared world games? Pausing, griefing, losing connection, all that stuff. Well, Playground seems quietly confident that it's nipped those in the bud. Yes, you can still pause the game while online and resume at whatever velocity you were moving in before pausing. You can still use photo mode and drone mode too, and even the rewind function. No, you can't be griefed by strangers. All players who aren't your friends or in an official convoy with you are automatically ghosted on contact. And no, if you lose your internet connection mid-session, you won't lose any progress or be bumped out to the main menu. Forza Horizon 4 will just transition seamlessly to its offline state and you'll be free to carry on. So, hopefully this has got you up to speed on the functionality and philosophy behind Forza Horizon 4's shared world. For plenty more on Forza Horizon 4, stick with IGN first for the remainder of the month. It felt really natural and appropriate to have you know, a British manufacturer providing, you know, the Hero Car, which is an incredibly important car in our list and, and plays an, an important role in our, in our game, you know. And we've had phenomenal cover cars previously. The Senna is no different in terms of just the level of engineering which is present. And obviously McLaren are renowned worldwide as this incredibly uh, pioneering engineering firm. They've brought that all to bear on the Senna. The Forza franchise is a fantastic opportunity and we definitely saw that with the partnership with the P1. It certainly allowed us to bring our brand to an entirely different audience. Its USP, its you know, reason for being, is to deliver the ultimate driving experience. Connection between the machine and the driver, and clearly, you know, that, that speaks to the name of the car, and obviously named after Ed and Senna. It's been a real privilege to be involved as we've brought that into the game, and McLaren have been incredibly uh, open uh, and forthcoming and allowing us access to, to whatever it is different parts of the team need to recreate it as, as perfectly as possible. The McLaren Senna itself was a different beast. That car is it's like nothing I've ever seen or recorded and we, we kind of faced a few challenges with, with that car, with the fact that the engine was encased, we couldn't really get access to it. We did actually just have to get our arms into one of the little crevices of the, of the Senna and get the, the engine mic'd up that way. And then we also record the, the authentic cockpit uh, interior as well, which means that in every single view of the Senna, you're hearing exactly what it sounded like for us in the car as we were driving it. So what we have here is each individual microphone that we put on the center and um, just going to go through you can hear the kind of difference between each one. So we had um, we had the engine which sounded a little bit like that. And that was from three different points on the Senna, which uh, we can bring together to make a really cool sound for the engine. Something that sounds a bit more aggressive, a bit cooler. So this is uh, the McLaren Senna actually implemented in the game, which has a nice rasp to it. All these exhaust pops that you can hear, they uh, were authentic recordings which, uh, which came from the McLaren session. Um, so that pop that you can hear, that's an authentic McLaren Senna pop. And inside you can hear that cockpit recording that we've, we've done. Many manufacturers love to say their car is a race car for the road and I think the Senna is one of the, the first cars we've seen where it genuinely is a race car for the road and that meant we had to approach it very differently. From the handling point of view, we strive to create a system where we treat it more from an engineering background than anything else so that allows us to take data supplied from the manufacturers and people at McLaren are great for giving really in-depth data. That allows us to then pipe that into the system and create the handling that way so we know it's, it's the most authentic and accurate handling we can create for the car. When it comes to tyres, aerodynamics and things, we're looking towards what a race car is capable of, but somehow it 
it has to function on a road as well, so things like suspension and the tyre itself has to be much more progressive and drivable than, than a race car. That's been one of the big challenges, getting that huge race car performance, but how McLaren have actually created this, this road car is, is quite astonishing. We're incredibly happy with, with how the Senna's turned out and super excited to, to let people get their hands on it because it's such a rare car that very few people will in, in the real world and it's one of the few places you're going to be able to, to drive the Senna. Time to take a look at the all new Forza Horizon 4. Joining us from Playground Games, let's welcome Ralph Fulton. Welcome. Thank you. You just revealed the game. How are you feeling? We just did. Uh, I feel great. I feel better for not being on the stage anymore, but uh, yeah, we feel, we feel great. About it, it looks absolutely gorgeous. Uh, can you tell us a bit about the setting? Where are we going to be able to explore this time around? Right, yeah. So, ending months of speculation, yeah. uh, Forza Horizon 4 is set in beautiful, historic Britain. It looks lovely. Um, it, it's a lovely country. We have, uh, I guess, rediscovered over the last 18 months or so. Obviously, it's where Playground Games is located. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I guess most of us probably grew up in that country as well. Yeah. Um, and we, we agonized over where to set the game, as we always did. Uh, as, as we always do, and, and a bunch of people within the studio made a really great pitch for the UK, for, for, for Britain. Um, and I'm delighted that they did, and they did it so well, and that we chose it because um, I think we've created the most authentic open world in Britain that, that we've ever done. That's all, I mean, you are right there, so. <laughs> well, we would have no excuse not to. But yeah, yeah. I, there's also kind of that, that pride, I think, right? And I yeah. think it's been a passion project for the team. They want to make sure that we're showing Britain at, at its absolute best. Yeah. Um, and we know when something's not quite right, um, you know, maybe th like we didn't in Australia. Um, <laughs> but, but, uh, no comment. But, yeah, no, it was but great. Certainly, uh, <laughs> certainly in Britain, we, we absolutely know when something's not quite right. And therefore, I think our visual bar is higher than ever. So people talk about and make jokes about the weather in Britain being pretty rainy. You guys have a full season system here. How does it work? So, and this is absolutely integral to, I think, to the pitch of the game. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think we could have done Britain if we didn't also do dynamic seasons, mm -hmm. um, which is really, I think, the, uh, the pivotal signature feature of, uh, of Forza Horizon 4. Britain is a country which is uh, like defined by its seasons. It's, yeah. you know, it's all we ever talk about, really. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, that's, that's a generalization, but you know, like, <laughs> we, we, do, we do love chatting about our weather. Uh, and our seasons are incredibly distinct. You know, not every country can, can claim that. Mm -hmm. Certainly uh, in, uh, in the UK, it, it's true. So I don't think we'd have done UK um, or, or Britain uh, if we weren't doing seasons. I, I don't think we'd have done seasons and then not done Britain because the two just yeah. really go hand in glove. Um, uh, I'm, I'm delighted that we have done it. It was a huge Herculean task to, to achieve dynamic seasons I in an imagine. open world. Um, but uh, a bunch of really smart people and really hardworking people came together from all disciplines within the studio to, to make it a reality. And you can see it now in the footage that we're watching as we transition from um, autumn to winter, as, as is the way it goes. Um, and you can see absolutely how, uh, how completely... Frozen over. I, that does actually happen. That Again, that authenticity I was talking about. Um, you can see how absolutely it changes uh, the world. So this is exactly the, the location you were driving in just a few seconds previously in autumn, and it's now completely frozen over. You're jumping onto a, um, a frozen river here, which is probably less advisable. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, you can see uh, as you as you go up the hill in the deep snow, you're sort of deforming it as you go, uh, and the whole world has changed. Not just in terms of the visuals, but in terms of the audio, in terms of the way the cars handle the driving experience and the gameplay that you you have so there. So, the activities that are available also change depending on the weather. They do, yeah, absolutely. And I think this is the really great hook uh, that we have around dynamic seasons of Forza Horizon 4. It's not just you know, a palette change. It's not just a visual uh, tune-up that happens between seasons. Um, the, the game is a, a shared open world, so everything is synchronized across all players. Right. So we're, we are always in winter together, and then when it moves to, to spring, it does so for all, all the players. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, everything is synchronized time of day, weather conditions and, and seasons, as I said. And you will get different uh, gameplay, you'll get different content, di different events uh, that uh, happen in different seasons. So you've always got something to look forward to. Yeah. Kind of like you do in real life. <laughs> yeah, well, mostly. It's been a very exciting <laughs> week this week. So one thing that I kind of <laughs> wanted to ask about to get really specific, when it comes to things like collectible items, like 
billboards or barn finds, did those also vary depending on season? So I'll give you an example which is really pertinent to what we're looking at here. So this is a race finishing out on a, a frozen lake. Yeah. That lake is only frozen in the winter season um, for three seasons of, of the year. Uh, it looks like that. It's just it's a big body of water. Uh, that's where a lake is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you for that. Please talk yeah. more about lakes. <laughs> I'm full of facts like that. Um, in the winter season, of course, uh, when, uh, when it is frozen, there are a couple of islands in that lake that you can mm. gain access to that normally you wouldn't be able to. And I don't feel I'm giving too much away to say that there is a barn find on one of those things. So I think that's Ooh, the cool. perfect example of, of what you're asking about. How is that going to work for things like blueprints, assuming that you have the uh, player-created blueprint system coming back? Yeah, and, and we do, and we've enhanced it, and that's, I guess, another story altogether. All, all but yeah, I think your question is, you know, how does that work across the seasons? Um, I think we have to do a bit of checking with that. Um, I think when, we, when you create something, whether it's a, a new championship mm -hmm. or a new route, which is uh, entirely new for Forza Horizon 4, you can create your own point-to-point -point or circuit uh, events um, and design those circuits and point-to-points yourself. We do a bit of a check to make sure that your route doesn't take you through something which doesn't exist, for example, gotcha. in a different season. There's a little bit of sanity checking happens behind the scenes. The Sounds season difficult, but it looks like a lot of fun. And okay, I'm a huge fan of the Forza Horizon series in general, and since two, I've been like, how are they going to make this better? And then three, and I was like, you've done it. It's the pinnacle of arcade races. You could never <laughs> improve upon this. It's perfect. So I wanted to ask, what are some of the other changes that you guys have added in? Yeah, I mean, we, we got that a lot after Forza Horizon 3, and it's enormously complimentary, mm -hmm. right? We, you know, we were thrilled to have that feedback, and, and still, and still... Is it daunting that... as well, though? You're like, oh, we've made the perfect game. Oh, no. Sure, yeah, I mean, for, I, think, <laughs> I think it has to be. I think I'd have been more daunted if we didn't have the team we do back at Playground. We didn't have the great minds and the incredible work ethic that we have back at that studio. I kind of knew we would crack that uh, in time, but sure, yeah, when, when, it's, when you're setting out on a project like this, there is that voice in the back of your mind saying, well, what if they're right? <laughs> um, I honestly feel like this is our best work ever. I think this is the, the best Forza Horizon. Um, and it's the combination of three really big ideas, I think. Two we've talked about already, like the, the setting uh, in Britain, which has resulted in this incredibly authentic world. The fact that we have dynamic seasons, yeah. um, which is this huge thing um, for an open world game. Absolutely. Um, and then the third thing, which uh, we call living the horizon life. And this is, I guess, how we frame up what you're going to do actually in this, uh, this world of Britain with dynamic seasons. And living in the horizon life just dovetails with those two ideas perfectly in the sense that Time is passing now, right? You have seasons mm -hmm. uh, and time will pass in the open world as you live there. And maybe you're not going to Horizon just for a, a great holiday anymore, you know, that perfect summer. Maybe you're actually going there to live. And we started thinking about what that would mean for the player. You know, mm -hmm. you're going to have to get yourself a house. You can't sleep in your car. Um, you're going to have to get yourself a job. Um, obviously, you'll do so in a very Horizon style. It's yes. not going to be mundane. Um, but these are oh, the things Oh, you're actually that, an accountant? Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> there, are some, there are some really fun jobs that you can get. Uh, you can be a stunt driver. Um, you can be the, the guy or girl who, um, who drives the cars on a, you know, an automotive magazine show naming mm. no names. Um, so there's a bunch of different things that you can go out and do in what we call a feature we call Horizon Stories. Um, you can customize your character. You can cho choose the outfits. You can choose the accessories. You can choose the emotes you use when you win uh, in the game. So there's a whole lot more bedding in of, of your identity within I the world. I love that. I think that's a really creative idea, and that's so cool. It's, it's, it, does that mean that when we're in our houses, we can physically get out of the car and walk around? It doesn't, uh, and that's... Um, I think that's, that's, a, that's a question everybody asks, mm -hmm. and it was a place that, to be honest, we just didn't really want to go. Yeah. Um, for us, it's all, about, um, it's all about the cars. We have more than 450 in this game, which is you know, a, a still more ludicrous number than last time. <laughs> yeah. um, and you'll be parking your car outside, and you'll be able to examine it in Forza Vista mode, which has been in for the Forza series for, uh, for a bunch of games now. Um, but really, the, the house is all about having a base within the world, a place that you can, they can call your own. And it being Britain, that house can be anything from a, you know, a cute little cottage in the Cotswolds to Edinburgh Castle. That's cool. I mean, we're, we're just about to cut to a break, but I wanted to ask really quickly, uh, is that going to be looped into the auctions in any way? So houses? auction house does return. I uh, I'm not aware of any plans that we have to allow you. To I know that would be houses. like very next level, but <laughs> yeah, totally absolutely. Um, maybe if uh, if the job you get is a realtor or something like that. But um, <laughs> I'm literally designing on the fly now. <laughs>
Alrighty, it is time to take a break, everyone. But next up, we're going to be diving back into all the big reveals from the Xbox press conference. I ain't here for the money, I ain't here for the fame Though it might be nice to own a jet plane I'ma do it all for you, come along and see it's true 